Hello everyone, my name is Ross the Alcheminiaturist, and this is crazy. A while ago, I did a video about trying, and ultimately failing, to paint my entire Chaos Space Marine army in about a week. Since then, I decided that I actually didn't have enough actual Chaos Space Marine Legionaries, and I needed more. So I had a cunning plan. As cunning as a fox who had just been appointed Professor of Cunning at Oxford University. A 3D printer. Now my plan of action is pretty simple, really. Step one is to assemble all of the models the way that Games Workshop had intended me, us, whoever, to do so. I have a crazier plan that would literally take all of my sanity and more time than I'm currently capable of doing. So we'll leave that for another video. Step one is easy. Clip everything out per model, clean up all the mold lines, as these models still have mold lines. Can I take a second to complain about mold lines? Yes? Thank you. I hate mold lines. And I'm sure you do too. It's 2022, and almost the end of 2022. Where did this year go? So many things happened, and yet it feels like nothing has happened as well. Anyway. Mold lines. I'm not distracted. You're distracted. I hate mold lines. You'd assume by this time that we would have found a better way to cast models, so we have zero mold lines. But even the newer models have some. Not tons, but still some. Once all of the models have been built, stock-wise, I needed to take inventory of all of the pieces that I had left. And damn do I have a lot of different options. Let's see. I have about seven right arms, seven left arms, five dual arms, three shoulder pads, well technically four but one is a part of the left arm, and four heads. My plan for these is to use as many stock bits as I can per model, so if I can use two arms, the weapons, and a head, I'm going to. I'm using that math, and it's very simple math, I can get a whopping 12 more models out of this box. 12. It's about 120% more models. That means I have to print out, unfortunately, approximately 8 heads, 20 shoulder pads, no arms, 20 sets of legs, 12 bodies, and 12 backpacks. For bases, I went to my favorite local game store. Shoutouts to them for having almost everything that I always need. I swear it's like they're almost psychic or something. And when they don't have what I need in stock, they're super helpful and put it on the next order. I went to Cults 3D, like I always do, to get the files of the bits that I needed. Some of the files were free, and some that I had to pay for. All of the links for everything that I have used are in the comments below. I have absolutely no qualms for paying for files that are mine to keep to be able to print out as many or as little as I want, so long as I have the electricity and resin. After purchasing the files, then came adding them to Chitu bugs, which is very, so user-friendly that even I can use it, and then squeezing the ever-living last square inch out of my build plate to keep the amount of prints I need to print down. It still took me about four rounds, mostly because I didn't estimate properly the first time and printed way too much of one file and not enough of another. Seriously, I was way too over-eager on some of these files. I have like 40 extra arms. Don't judge me, I'll make an all-arms monster for Mordheim or something. Next came the cleaning and curing. I've made my own wash, clean, cure station that I'll show in an upcoming video, but that was easy as pie. Then came the assembly and, well, to put it simple, some things went fast and, well, some things didn't. I'm looking at you, arm with book. Seriously, how hard can attaching one arm be? Well, it took about 20 minutes and then I scrapped the idea of using it. With polystyrene, or even metal, which is what Games Workshop seems to make most of their models out of, they seem to take ages to cure and set. I definitely did not appreciate the running poses that I chose for some of the models. They did not want to stay up while curing the bases. While this quick and fast and dirty build goes on, I want to say that I most likely will not be using the 3D printed models in anything but friendly games, and games that I am explicitly stated that I can use them. 
These 3D printed models, like the rest of my 3D printed models that I've printed, make up about less than 10% of any army that I have or I'm currently planning on having. To me, 3D printing should be an addition to, not a replacement to actual proper models. Save where models aren't available for, or custom parts. I'm looking at you, Turnip28. You have some models and some bits, and I know that you can use Perry miniatures as well as Cities of Sigmar from GW to kitbash and convert your own. Just so you know, there will be a Turnip28 video in the near future. I don't know when, but it's a when, not an if. And that's my stance on 3D printing. But at the same time, I'm not the miniature police. So do what you want to do and be happy with results. Anyway, speed time. After everything is said and done, I got an extra 12 miniatures from this box. I know it looks like 13, but I had printed myself a vanity extra one with a guitar because the guitar was too good to pass up. I've left nothing left over, and every additional model has as many GW bits on there as I could keep, so it was kept as close to as possible for stock as I could. Could I have stretched it farther? Definitely. 
but that would have, in my opinion, defeated the purpose of seeing how many I could build this way. Maybe later I'll do that crazy crazy video idea I have. Until the next video, keep that brush wet and keep those miniatures painted.